Welcome back to the tutorial. Today we're going to go over the snapping systems that exist within Neos. We're going to be focusing on the native snapping systems, so I won't be covering any of the great community tools that exist, such as blueprints or the um, various sort of logic tools where things snap around, or even uh, Gohepe's uh, building tool. Um, on the topic of Gohepe's uh, building tool, you can see in the video description there is a link to a Twitter post by them where they go over how they built a house really quickly using that tool. It's a great tool, but I just wanted to cover the native functionality that exists. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this because uh, not many people realize that it exists and it may be of help to someone um, and maybe help to some of you. And also explain some of the sort of features and objects that you might have seen whilst editing things or browsing folders that you might have thought, hang on, what does that do? So that should uh, clear up some confusion on those or at least provide some enlightenment based on those. Let's go ahead and take a look and I'll show you native snapping. So I'm going to come over here into Smooth POV. You can see I'm in a world. There's some goodies over there. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But I'm going to start here with just uh, snapping a cube to a cube. That's why there's some cubes in the world. I'll probably only use one of these cubes, but it's you know, good to have more than you need. So we'll start by making a... Um, actually, let's deselect everything from a previous take here. There we go. We're going to start by making another cube, which we'll use to snap to some other cubes in this world. Here I'm just using the shape tool. The shape tool's great. If you need an overview of the shape tool, let me know. But it's uh, you know pretty much just sort of drag and... It's a cube. So go ahead, put that away. So this is the cube that we're going to snap, and we're going to go ahead and snap it to this cube over here. I'll show you how that works, but first we want to talk a little bit about uh, the basics of sort of what's going on here. So after that, I'm going to go ahead and equip a uh, de uh, developer tooltip with the developer tooltip equipped. I'm going to go ahead and select this uh, cube using secondary by pointing my laser at it and hitting secondary. So we talk about uh, a lot of what's going on here in my gizmo overview, so that's linked in the video description. I don't go into much detail about the snapping capabilities there because I um, wanted to leave them and do some research on them. Um, so do watch the gizmo tutorial if some of this doesn't make too much sense to you, but this will be purely focused on the snapping parts of the gizmo, and I'll be skipping over some of the other um, sort of buttons and, and components here that you might see. So when you select a uh, cube, or any other object actually, you'll see uh, a number of things happen. First of all, this uh, pink box happens. Uh, we talk about that in various other videos, but that's the bounding box usually of its colliders. On a cube, it just so happens that the cube's collider lines up with the visual type of the cube. But if you select, say, a um, model of a cat or something like that, you'll see that things don't line up exactly. You'll see that there are yellow balls throughout the object. You can see one in each corner of the bounding box, and there's also one in the center there. Those are snapping registration points and snapping um, opportunities that you can use, um, and those are control how snapping works. Uh, you'll also see that there are arrows for each cardinal direction, so Y, X, and Z, and you can use these to um, snap things around. So let's go ahead and look at uh, how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and select the red arrow here, this is the X direction, by pointing at it with my laser and holding down uh, primary. You'll see here that I get this um, red line that comes out of the center of the object, and it terminates here at this uh, yellow ball here and then crosses over to the tip of my tool i've always wondered <laughs> what is this you know it looks like something from you know maybe a maths class where you draw you know right angles from those uh, plastic tools but what this actually represents is the x position of this cube um unconstrained in other axes so for example here i can move this up and down and you'll see that this red line always points back to the center and in fact it's always uh, pointing to the x position that's being changed here so that the um other locations don't matter, so the, the Z and Y position don't matter, but the X position always points back to the center there. It makes a little bit more sense using the Y position, because that one is not is uh, locked to anything except um, Z or X movement. So you'll see here, wherever I put this, this ball, it's still pointing to the Y position of the cube. So what can I do with these? I can actually snap together um, objects using them. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this uh, cube first. Um, and so this is how you, you know, get snapping going. Select the thing you want to snap um, with secondary using the developer tooltip, and you'll see that the gizmo jumps across to there. That's totally fine. Then go ahead and reselect the object that you want to snap, and you'll see a gizmo jumps to there. If you have uh, perfect timing, you won't need to do that sort of weird juggling that we just did, but I did because I was showing you this uh, gizmo before I had this selected. So you'll see now what we've got is we've got this cube over here selected. We can call this one the uh, secondary cube, and this is the object we want to snap to. You'll see it still had its bounding box. It still has that dot in the center, which represents its position, um, but it doesn't actually have any gizmos. This is the one that's got the uh, gizmo for moving it. Now, if I go ahead and I take the X position here by pointing my laser at the X arrow again, I get this ball here, and I put this ball into the center of that cube. So I just walk over, 
don't worry about where the cube is, it doesn't matter. You'll see that there's a plus symbol that appears. What that means is that the X position of this cube has been synchronized or snapped with the X position of that cube. Before I continue, I do want to cover that this is not snapping in terms of parenting, such as hats, scarves, boots, etc. It's just snapping in terms of position. Um, that uh, term is sort of not overloaded because there's also snappers as a component as a system within Neos. I'll link in the video description to my snapping tutorial about that, uh, but do note that none of these things will be parented together. This is purely positional stuff. If I wanted to, I could pull this cube out and you know move it across the room if I wanted to, but we'll be you know carefully snapping it to the other one. Um, I just wanted to you know double check that before anyone in the comments was like, but this isn't a hat. Nope, these are cubes. So let's go ahead and snap the uh, X plus uh, one I did. Let's do Y. So we're going to go ahead and select the Y position, and I'm going to put that ball into the center there, and you'll see it's now lined up on the Y. In fact, if I go around this way, we can't really see that second cube, and that's because it's um, snapped together on the X and Y position. If I now do the Z position, which is the blue one here, you'll see again I get a ball, this time with blue line. If I put that in the center there, these items are now identical in their uh, position data. So they're in exactly the same position, and I snapped them. Now, obviously, you don't have to snap all three directions. You could snap one of them or two of them, just get things in a line. Um, but there you go. That's how you snap two objects together. There is more to go over. I want to cover what these um, outside balls do and how you can use those. So let's go ahead and un, un uh, do these. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this aside. And if I can actually aim there, there we go. Let's go ahead and select one of these balls. So on the object that I want to move, so this one with the translation gizmo here, I'm going to go ahead and select this um, ball here. What does this mean? This means that we're now snapping things to that corner, we're using that corner as a reference point. So if I go ahead and again and do the um, X one, and I put that ball in the center here, I'm now snapping that corner here to that central position rather than snapping the central position of both. So as an example here, if I move this into here, you'll now see that we've got a bit of the cube um, sticking up, and that's because I've snapped everything to um, that corner and not the center here. If I go ahead and snap the X, that'll become a little bit more clear. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the X there. There we go. Looks like that needs to happen again. There we go. That's perfect now. Sometimes things are just, you know, underlined a little bit depending on how much my hand is moving. So now you'll see that the um, corner of the second cube, of the, uh, you know, the cube here is snapped to the center of this cube here. This can be useful for lining up building, uh, buildings and things like that, walls, stuff like that. Uh, do note that you can also snap that corner point to one of the corner points of uh, another object. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I'm actually going to go ahead and reset its rotation. There we go. You can do that by just double-clicking these um, gizmo buttons, by the way. Not many people know that one, including me. I think it was Hamish who showed me that one, but thank you, whoever it was. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and snap this corner here to this corner here, which will be a great way to start building a wall. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab the Y first. I'm going to put that Y point there so that it snaps with the plus symbol to that corner. And then we'll go ahead and do the same for the Z and the same for the X. We'll just have to do the Y again just to get things really uh, centered there. Now I'm going to go ahead and deselect everything and you'll see that we've now got this edge lined up almost perfectly. In fact, that's a you know really uh, nice corner there. Everything's lined up perfectly. Again, these things aren't parented to each other, so I can just go ahead and you know completely undo the work I just did and move things around here. Now, something to note is that you can use those balls with the other um, gizmo um, operations. So again, here I'm just going to go ahead and do the setup. There we go. So now I've got the uh, the bounding box back here. I can go ahead and select the rotational gizmo here, and I can use the red um, it's in the X rotation here, and I can snap this to, to various points. I haven't found much use to this. Um, I thought it might sort of synchronize their rotations, but it doesn't. Um, it does let you sort of, you know, point things at um, certain points here. So in, in this particular case, I'm pointing the center of the object at that point, or I'm pointing it at the center there, or I'm pointing it there. So it could be useful for something like that, but I haven't really found much use case for it beyond that. You can do them on all axes there, so I can go ahead and do this, and now you'll see it's sort of aligned to that. Um, not as precise as the other, doesn't give me as much satisfaction as the other one, as in, you know, lining up with that perfect edge there, but it is an opportunity that is available to you should you want to use it. Um, you can also do the same with the scale gizmo. If I go ahead and select the scale gizmo here, and I select the uh, Z scale here, again, I can lock that to their point that point that may be useful for sort of expanding stuff to a certain um, extent such that it's the same as others but you can see here that it's not lining up perfectly here 
Um, so again, here it's not uh, exactly perfect, but it's there if you want to use it. I don't find myself using those snapping uh, points with the uh, other gizmos that much. So that's snapping for you. I did want to talk about one of the component categories, and we should be able to cover this in one because it basically does exactly the same thing as this, but just in various different ways. And so we're going to be talking about the uh, mystical um, transform category called snapping. So I'll go ahead and show you where it is, and then I'll show you the various options there to the left here. So if I go to attach component transform snapping, we haven't really been in here on my tutorials before, you'll see snap circle, snap grid, snap line, snap plane, and snap point, and snap sphere. Let's go ahead and go over each of these in turn. I'm going to start with ones that you might be able to find in Essential Tools. So inside Essential Tools, you'll find this object, which is a ruler, and this object, which is a sphere, and these have snap line and snap sphere on them. Mostly, or uh, at least the reported use case of both of these was um, the uh, pen functionality. So if I go to um, Essential Tools brushes and I just pick up you know, any standard brush, so here's that yellow brush from Essential Tools brushes, and I start drawing and then I go near the ruler, you'll see it snaps to that ruler, which makes a really nice way to draw lines. I've seen some people sort of draw graphs using that, etc. And I think in my um, avatar tutorial, part one, I use the snap sphere so that we can draw um, a face really easily, and that's because the pen tool again snaps onto the sphere. And I thought that's all that they did. But in researching this um, video, I also found out that these um, two objects work with those uh, snap points. Let's go ahead and check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and select this cube again, such that we get its uh, translation gizmo. I'm going to drag it by the center here, just click the white square in the middle of the translation gizmo here, and you'll be able to move it by the entire um, object rather than any, uh, one direction in particular. And you'll see here that it's now snapping along this ruler. So I can sort of slide it naturally along the ruler. You'll see it jumps around a little bit, and that's just if um, my movement or its movement leaves the snapping range of the snap line, but you'll see that the snap line is existing here. Let's go ahead and inspect this ruler so I can show you what's going on inside it. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect this. You'll see the ruler solid here, that's just the model, but you also see two lines. So this is, I believe, the top line. Yeah, there we go. So here's the snap line. It's in the direct center of the ruler, and you'll see point zero is on the um, left side of it, and point one is on the right side of it. And those are registered together with the snap line component. So here, see here, snap line component between point zero and point one. And that's why we're getting snapping along this line. There's also a line along the bottom of the ruler here, so we'll be able to uh, snap it to the bottom of the ruler as well, which I believe we're doing there. It's kind of a little hard to see. Yep, that's this, the, the bottom line. So that is snap line for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at, let's move that one way. We'll take a look at the uh, snap sphere. Let me just get rid of my smiley face. So again, I'll bring this over using the gizmo. And again, you'll see that this is now snapping to the surface of a sphere. I find this quite um, quite soothing to do because you know it's uh, doing a lot of sort of complicated snapping logics here to keep this on the outside of the sphere here. You can sort of just spin it around, etc. It's all snapping it to the the a point on the surface of the sphere. Let's go ahead and inspect this sphere. You'll see snap sphere. If we scroll down, snap sphere, the component. So snap sphere has a radius rather than two points, um, and that radius here is 0 0.5, which actually lines up with the um, mesh portion of the sphere. So you see 0 0.5 on the radius of the sphere mesh and 0 0.5 on the radius of the snap sphere. So that's the snap sphere for you. Let's go ahead. This is going to be a cylinder, but I'm actually illustrating the um, snap circle here. You'll see this one again. Let me get that gizmo back. So just bring these a little bit closer. There we go. And again, here you'll see this is just snapping along the outside of this uh, cylinder because I made a snap circle on this cylinder. So again, here quite soothing. I can just sort of spin it around and it'll keep snapping to there. If we inspect this cylinder, then we scroll down, we'll see snap circle. And again, this takes a um, radius, which I've duplicated with the cylinder uh, collider and the cylinder mesh here. But it also takes a normal, and that's the sort of positional rotation of the um, uh, snap circle. So in this case, I've said Y1, and that means up here, following this um, green arrow of the cylinder, and that means that it's you know snapping in that direction. If I said a different direction, it would create a circle in um, a different sort of rotation orientation. So that is the snap circle for you. Uh, next one is the snap plane. Here I've just created a simple quad using create new 3D model quad. And I can go ahead and take this up to the quad here, and you'll see it snaps along the quad, so it's almost like a wall it can't go through. 
there. That's the snap plane for you. Let's go ahead and select the quad and take a look at that. So if I go down here and scroll down, you'll see snap plane. And again, here this needs a normal. And for the normal, I've specified negative one, which is the opposite direction of the um, uh, blue arrow here. The reason I've done this is by default, a quad is uh, tr uh, only one sided. So I just did it on negative one so you could see it. So that is the snap plane for you. Next, we have the snap point. I've just made a tiny sphere for this. It's, it's a little bit like the sphere over there, but it's, it's only one point. I just wanted to make it a, um, visual so I could see it. So again, here with this cube selected, I can go out, I need to grab, there we go. I can snap it to that, that sphere. And again, I can take the sphere wherever I want and snap objects to it. You might be interested to note as well, if you inspect the anchor point up here, um, I believe that you saw. Oh, no, I was mistaken. I thought that those balls were actually snap points there, but uh, obviously not. They're a little bit more complicated of a component. So you go, that's snap point for you. Let's take a look at it in the inspector. This is probably the simplest one. It's just got snap point, and it's the point there. And that's snap point for you. The last one is one that I'm sort of excited about, actually. I want to see if I can sort of do any building with it. And that's this uh, green effect that we can see here. It's got a fresnel material on it, so it changes depending on sort of my distance and how I'm looking at it. But this is a snap grid. So if I take my cube that I've been using throughout this video up to the grid here, and I use the uh, gizmo here, I can put it into this grid, and you'll see that it's repeatedly snapping in various um, axes within this grid. And that's because it's a snap grid. Let's take a look at the snap grid in the inspector. If I scroll down through this component, uh, or actually let's just off the top, you'll see a snap grid. You'll see that the bound size is one by one by one, which is why I've got a one by one cube there. And the grid size here is uh, 0.25 in all um, axes. Uh, this wasn't set up automatically. This was actually set by um, by myself. I was playing around with it. So uh, it snaps sort of at quarterly points in all directions. What that means is that there is uh, four points in the vertical, four points in the horizontal, and four points in the depth to snap. So four times four times four points that it can snap into um, total. You can change this down. So for example, here, if I change this down to 0.5, for example, 0.5, and then I drag this into all axes, you'll see that there's a lot of snapping going on. Keep this um, snap size uh, small, or at least relative to the size of the cube, or you end up with a sort of a mess. So here you go, I'm just sort of snapping crazily through this because it's, you know, the, the bounce, uh, the grid size is way too small. So that is the snap grid for you. As of note, um, the other components here, so the snap line, snap sphere, snap circle, point, um, plane, they did not create anything visual when I added them, but the snap grid will. To just demonstrate that, if I go to create new empty object and then I go to attach component transform snapping, you'll see uh, here we are, all those components again, just in case you've uh, forgotten where they are from earlier. If I select snap grid, you'll see that you get that grid. You get that grid visual, you get the Fresnel material and everything inside it. That won't happen with the uh, circle or the uh, or the other ones. Will it happen with the circle? I thought it might because the the circle kind of relates to the uh, the size of the the circle that's in there. I mean the sphere. No, it won't. Okay, cool. So yeah, you don't even have a visual on these. These were just ones I found in the structural tools, and then these ones I made. Um, if you're interested in um, playing around with these, I'll actually make a new uh, folder within my tutorial folder called Snapping, and I'll put all of these objects in here. You'll get a copy of the ruler, the sphere, the cylinder, the plane, the point, etc., just to play around with. Um, but do feel free to just make them yourselves. They are in Transform and Snapping. There you go. I think that's all I have to say about the native snapping capabilities. Like I said, um, there are um, you know alternative tools that you can use within the community that allow sort of much more um, non- uh, non-technical snapping i'd call this kind of technical snapping right because you're playing around with with you know mathematics you're playing around with each individual coordinate etc whereas the, the tools like the hepe's um building tool and uh you know the logic snapping tools they feel much more sort of um like snapping you might find in other um other social vr games such as you know uh rec room etc or or you know from gary's mod etc we could snap things together a little bit more uh less technically i guess so that is uh, snapping for you. If you have any questions about snapping, do leave them in the comments below. I'll also put chapters on this video because I know I witted on for a long time about it. But I was just excited to finally find out what all that Tyler did. And we did a category in one video. We did an entire category. Uh, so let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.